Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Welcome to another revision video. This is just going through what you will need for your second test on algebra. So you need to know these four broad topics, substitution, operations with terms, expanding brackets, and factorization. I'll go through each of these individually. Please pause and copy down this list if you need. All right, let's start by looking at what you need to know with substitution. So in a second, I'm going to go through substitution. Before that, I just want us to understand exactly what we're doing with algebra. In one of my previous videos, I said algebra is just the study of operations, you know, plus, minus, divide, all that stuff. But it's a way for us to represent situations in the real world in mathematical expressions or equations and make things simpler. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'd say I take a number, I multiply it by 8, and then 6 is added to the result. So that's a situation that you might need. It could be as simple as, you know, your mum gives you $6 to clean the yard plus $8 per hour or whatever. And we want to find a way to write that simply. So when we represent numbers that we don't know, we just give them a letter and any letter that we give them doesn't matter, whether it's A, Z, Y, whatever. We call these letters pronumerals. I can write this sentence in black much more simply. So I can just write it as 8 times an unknown number which I call x plus 6. And what we've been doing is we've been looking at things that we can do with expressions or terms like this. You know, we can multiply them, we can add them, and all sorts of things. And then hopefully we'll get to a point by the end of the year where we can use these to solve equations and solve for unknown numbers. But that's how you'd write a sentence like that. So this expression could represent something in real life. As I said, you know, you're doing a job for your mum. If you work, say, X hours and you get paid $8 per hour and she gives you an extra $6 just for starting the job, this expression can represent how much money you're going to get paid. Now, substitution would be where we just take the pronumeral, the letter X, and we give it a specific value. So let's say that this actually did represent the amount of money you were going to get paid for doing a job, where x equals the number of hours. So if you know how many hours that you work, you can substitute, you can change x into that number of hours and figure out how much money you're going to get. So if x equals 3, you work for 3 hours, then 8x plus 6 is 8 times 3 plus 6, and you would get $30 for that. Let's say that you're gonna do a job for seven hours. We can substitute x for seven. We can change x to seven, so it would be eight times x plus six, and you can use your calculator to do this very easily. So make sure that you do understand this, and make sure you also understand that eight x means eight times x. It doesn't mean the first digit's eight and the second digit's x, okay? Substitution is pretty easy. Sometimes you will have to substitute a negative number. So in this expression, I could substitute negative five, even though I can't work negative five hours. In that case, it'd just be eight times negative five plus six, but you can use your calculator for this, so you don't need to stress too much about it, okay? So that's substitution. Now, sometimes you will have two variables, two pronumerals. So I'm gonna rub this example out and show you a different example with two variables. Please pause and copy down if you need. So the situation where I have two different unknown numbers that are added. So these, again, these two numbers could be anything. They could be how much money I have and how much money you have, and we're going to put our money together to buy something cool or whatever. So I can call these two letters whatever I want. I could call them, say, X and Y. So two different unknown numbers added together, X plus Y. X and Y are the two unknown numbers. They're different, so I gave them a different letter. And this expression here in blue says exactly what is said in black. So we've represented a situation. Again, it could be, you know, the amount of money two people have, the amount of chocolates they have, whatever. We've represented that in a mathematical expression. And sometimes we will want to substitute different values. So this time you, you might be told, say, x is negative 3, y is negative 9. It doesn't matter that we have two variables this time, we're gonna do exactly the same way as the last time. I just change x 
to minus 3, y to minus 9. So the value of that expression, if I'm asked to evaluate it, will just be minus 12, and I can use my calculator. Okay, great. We're going to go on to the next section, which is on operations with terms. Okay, so let's try and remember what a term is first. So we just had, for example, the situation x plus y we used to substitute. Now, we call this an expression. So when you see lots of pluses or minus signs, it's an expression. And each of these two things that make up it is a term. But it's actually possible that we have a term that's not got a letter in it. So I could, you know, make the term 3 plus x plus y, and 3 is a term 2. Now, if there is a term that doesn't have a letter, we call it a constant term. So constant's like the opposite of variable. x and y are variables because they can change value. 3 can't change value, it's just 3. So it's a constant term. If I put, say, a 2 in front of the x, 2x does not become a constant term. 2x is still a variable because it's got x in it. So 3 is the constant term in this expression. And this expression has three terms. The three terms are the number 3, 2x, and y. So another example of an expression you might have, we might have 7y plus 5a minus 6z, for example. Okay, so this expression also has three terms. One, two, three. Now, another word you need to make sure you know is coefficient, and I'll be referring to that in the video. So that means the number in front of. So in this expression here, the coefficient of y is 7. The coefficient of z, for example, although it's got a 6 in front of it, there's actually a minus sign attached to that. So the coefficient of z here is minus 6. The coefficient of a is 5. So coefficient just means number in front of. So we're going to use that now when we actually do operations with terms. So when we try to add and subtract terms, we can only do it with like terms. And when you can do it, when they are like terms, you just add or subtract the coefficients, that is, number in front of. So let's do a few examples. So 7x plus 3x, we just add the coefficients because 7x and 3x are like terms. 7 plus 3 is 10, and we have an x there as well. So, why are these like terms? Because they both have the same sequence of pronumerals or letters. They both have 1x. If I have something like 4 plus 9y minus 3y, 4 is not a like term with this term or this term, and that's because the second two terms, this one and this one, both have a y, whereas the first term doesn't have a y. So we can only add or subtract the ones that are like terms. So if there is a term that doesn't have a like term, we leave it as it is. 9y minus 3y is 6y. Again, I just subtracted the coefficients. Now, x and x squared are actually not like terms. The reason is because this one here, x squared, is x times x. It has two x's, whereas the first one doesn't. So we actually can't simplify this or collect like terms. It's actually going to stay exactly as it is. There are no like terms in that. Now, sometimes terms will have more than one letter. So you might have the terms, say, 7ab and 5ba, and let's say we want to add that to 8a. So again, in this expression, there's one, two, three terms. Now, this term and this term, they are like terms, even though the A's and the B's are written in a different order. That doesn't matter. All that matters is that they both have one A and they both have one B. That's why they're like terms. So 7AB minus 5BA is just 2BA or 2AB. It doesn't matter which way around you write the letters. Now 8A is not a like term, so we leave it exactly as it is, because it doesn't have a B in it, it doesn't have the exact same sequence as the other terms. Let's go on to multiplying and dividing. 
So I can actually multiply and divide terms even if they're not like terms. So let's say I have something like 7b times by 8. Even though 8 and 7b are not like terms, I can multiply them. 8 times 7 is 56, and then I write the letter b. So again, we're just multiplying and dividing coefficients. 30c divided by 6. So 30 divided 6 is 5, and I write the letter there, even though they're not like terms. Sometimes you might have to multiply the same letter more than once. So if I have like 8x times 5x, 8 times 5 is 40, but there's not 1, there's 2x's being multiplied. And so we put a little 2 there to represent that there are 2x's being multiplied. Now sometimes what you'll have to do is divide and you'll have to use cancelling. Now we're not going to do algebraic fractions on the test, but we still need to know how to cancel. So if I have something like 40ab divided by 8b, now I can cancel any letter that is on the top and the bottom. I, f I need to simplify this fraction 40 over 8, which is just 5, and I'm left with A, so I write that. But I can cross off things that are common on the top and the bottom. So if I have something like 7BC over 14, say, BD, again, I can cross off letters that are on the top and the bottom. I simplify 7 over 14 to a half. I have a C on top and a D on the bottom, and I didn't do anything with that. So the answer is just 1C over 2D. You don't have to write 1C. You can just write it as C because they're the exact same thing. Sometimes you might have to cancel involving powers. So let's say I have 8X squared Y over 4XY. Now, they're not like terms, but I can still divide. I cross out the Ys. Now, X squared divided by X is just X. 8 divided by 4 is 2. How easy is that? All right, I'm going to move on to expanding brackets now. Okay, so when we're talking about expanding brackets, we start with an expression like this, and we want to end up with something that doesn't have brackets. Now, I'll give you the answer to that, but I just want you to understand. So when I start with the brackets and go this way, that's expanding. And when I start with something that doesn't have brackets and I want to make it have brackets, that going the other way, that's factorizing. And I'll go through that in a second. So the way you expand brackets is using the distributive law. So if I have something like this, I and it's called the distributive law because I distribute the thing outside the brackets to everything inside the brackets, and if no operation's written, it's a time. So 7 times x is just 7x, seven, 7 times 3 is 21, positive times a positive gives me a positive. 8 outside of, say, 2x minus 1, so I go 8 times 2x, 8 times 1, but I had a positive times a negative, and that gives me a negative. Sometimes you might have to expand and collect like terms. So if I have something like 7 times 3y minus 5 plus 2y, I always do the brackets first because of order of operations. So 7 times 3y, 7 times negative 5. I haven't done anything with the 2y, so I need to write it as it was. Now, the, this one here and this one here are like terms, so I get 23y minus 35. So if you are multiplying a variable more than once, you need to reflect that in the power. So if I have 7x, say, times by x minus 9, that would give me 7x times x is actually 7x squared. 7 times negative 9 is 63. Make sure you're okay with negatives. Sometimes you might have a negative out the front, say 8a plus 5b, in which case negative 5 times 8a is negative 40a, negative 5 times 5b is negative 25b. So make sure you remember to distribute the thing out of the brackets to everything inside. People usually remember, say that they've got to multiply the thing outside by the first thing in the brackets, and they forget they have to multiply by the second thing. All right, the last topic I'll go through now is factorization. So factorization is going the opposite way to expanding. So I'll have something like this and I want to write it like this. 
So factorization and expansion undo each other in exactly the same way that multiplication and division undo each other, in exactly the same way addition and subtraction undo each other. So what I'm actually doing is taking an expression and I'm writing it as something times something in brackets. That's what it means to factor something. Write it as something times something. So what I do here is I need to find the highest common factor of the terms. Then I write this outside the brackets. And then I divide each term by the highest common factor. All right, let's just go through some examples. So let's say I have 4x plus 16. So the highest common factor of 4x and 16 is there are no letters that are common here. So I put that outside the brackets. What goes inside the brackets? 4x divided by 4, just x. 16 divided by 4, and that's positive 4. So if I were to expand this, I would get my original expression. Let's try another one. So let's say I have 8xy plus 40y. Now the highest common factor of 8 and 40 is 8, but there's also a y in both terms. So I need to write that out the front as well. So what goes in the brackets? 8xy divided by 8y is just x, because I times 8y by x to get this. 40y divided by 8y is just positive 5. Sometimes you'll have negatives as well. So let's say I have negative 16a minus 32, so highest common factor. This time I'm going to take out negative 16. So then, negative 16a divide negative 16 is positive a. Negative 32 divide negative 16 is positive 2. Again, if I expand this, I get my original expression. Let's try one more. Let's say I have 30yz plus 60. So the highest common factor of 30 and 60 is 30. There are no letters in common. And so 30yz divide 30 is just yz. 60 divide 30 is positive 2. The last one I want to show you is where there are powers. So let's say I have 7x to the power of 5 plus 28x squared. So we're going to do this the same way. The highest common factor of 7 and 28 is 7. The highest common factor, what's common in the letters, I take out the, the variable or the pronumeral with the lowest power. So I'm going to take out x squared. So what do I put in the brackets? 7x to the power of 5 divide 7x squared is just x cubed. 28x squared divides 7x squared is just 4. Now, when you have finished and you've got your answer, the things in the bracket should have no common factor. x cubed and 4 have no common factor. y, z, and 2 have no common factor. a and 2, no common factor, and so on. If you've done that, you know you've done at least something right. All right, all the best for the test. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Please come and ask if you have any questions. Good luck studying.